my name is Maurice Washington. I want to welcome everybody to another episode of Executive Talk. Those are are watching on live TV and also those are are watching on social media. As just a couple of reminders, Executive Talk, we, we do talk about the heart and soul of your business. We want to make sure that you're understanding that this is about you and how it's showing up in your business, first of all. So again, thank you guys for engaging with that. But on social media, on your Facebook, on your YouTube, on your Twitter, these are where you can follow us and keep the conversation going and also help share with the community. This is not just about you. This is not about your neighbor. It is about all of us because God's word is about all of us. So that's the most important value, not just to share what's being spoken about, but again, share God's knowledge. On Facebook and also on YouTube, those are the two conversation pieces where we can converse and keep the conversation going. So you may have some questions, something may hit you directly, um, so on and so forth, but just make sure that you feel comfortable knowing that we can converse and we'll make sure that we can connect with you. But most importantly, before we get into this topic, because it is a heart and soul of your business, their key word is your. When it's your, there has that responsibility of what you have to do and as far as being a receiver, and that is opening up your heart. Ensuring that you don't just pass this information on and start thinking about your neighbor, that you start thinking about you. Because you may be able to directly help your neighbor by the new thing that, the new thing that you learned. Because most importantly for me, I've, I keep on having to learn as I'm doing these shows. So I'm growing with you. Okay? So again, this is a community program. It is all about us. But let's get into today's topic. This is part two of the series of Are Your Habits Toxic to Your Business Growth? Okay? What do you think about habits first and foremost? And that's why I wanted to, I'm going to hit you with truth right away. What do you think about your habits? That's why I don't want you to pass the baton to your neighbor. I don't want you to pass the baton to your husband. I don't want you to pass the baton to your wife. I want you to pass the baton to yourself, one hand to the other. Okay? What do you think about your habits currently? Are you comfortable with them? Do you feel like they're amazing? Do you feel like they don't affect anybody? So put, position yourself as a business owner. Position yourself as an employee. What habits show up as an employee as you bring them to the office space? What habits do you have as, a, as an owner that's coming to the office space? Here in part two, we're going to get into a little bit deeper context because first, the first show was more of your introduction. It's more of understanding the origination of habits, how they start, the commitment, the, the, the childhood experience when it comes to habits, and how it's just kind of part of you. It's a major part of you, but how much do you think about your habits? Because it's part of you, you just kind of shuffle up underneath the, 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 the couch, if you will, and save it, for later, save it for later. Because ultimately, we feel like it, it doesn't really matter. Well, Maurice, yeah, I don't like my habits now that you brought it to my attention. Well, think about it. Have you dealt with them? Have you taken the time to, to really address those habits that you feel like aren't, aren't good? If the answer is no, they're up underneath the couch. You forgot about them. They weren't really that important. Well, let's talk about, let's get into this, into this topic. The definition of a habit is a settled or regular tendency or practice, especially one that is hard to give up. It is hard to give up. The thing about habits is it's a habit, it's a system. It's something that you can get used to. Okay, it's a, it's a settled, okay, number one, settled. Let's start with that word, it's settled. It means I'm, I'm good with it. it. It hurts, but I'm settled. You know how it's settled? You keep doing it. Habits. Regular. When you're settled with something, it's something that you constantly do regularly. Remember in our first show, if, you, if you're able to watch it, it's, it's something that is, is systematic. It comes with a system. It gives you a chance to actually feel alive. It helps with the level of creation that you're able to make that God gave mankind. You can't create anything without habits. Everything that is created, even your world today, even your, your house, your business model, has something to do with your habits in it in order for it to keep going. 
the reason why you're still in business or whatnot, there's a habit and there's a regular tendency or practice that's happening. So the, the worst part about these habits is especially one that is hard to give up. That's so why I want you to key, on, key in on as well. So you have a settled and regular tendency that is hard to give up. Is that a collision course? It very well could be. Why is it a collision course? Because if one of those habits are a fleshly habit, because guess what? Our vernacular has made, this is how you know you can actually push um, these habits aside. What is a bad habit? Well, Maurice does. It's something that you don't like. Well, in the Bible, have you, said any, have you read anything regarding a bad habit? Or did you, in the Bible, did it have something to do with flesh? So that's where I rephrased it today of fleshly habits. Because it's coming from your flesh. We just made it palatable for us by calling it bad. And guess what? When you make it palatable, you don't, you're not responsible for it at all either. That's the trick of the enemy. So this is all in your flesh. So if you have one that's hard to give up, that's in your flesh, how, you're going you're gonna to put it away. And the fact that we lowered it down to make it better for us by calling it bad, there's no responsibility to it. Well, let's get into some major truth about habits. Your habits whether it's coming from your spirit or from your flesh, you're going to be consistent in them. As the definition just said. So in order for habits to create the system, to create what you have created in your world, something had to be consistent and you had to keep on doing that habit in order for it to be what it is. In the other show, we talked about some of your relationships. Some of you are mad at your husband or wife all the time. There is something about your habits that are consistent that's coming from the flesh that is messing with you, the, the course of your marriage. There is something about your habits that's consistent that's showing up from the flesh into your business. It's all right there in the chaos and the, the gossip and all everything that happens within a company. Okay, kind of the shady business behind the scenes or some of the things that aren't working. Guess what? There's a habit to it. And there's most importantly a consistent habit to it that's operating from the flesh that's creating its own operation into your, into your business, into your life. Now, you know, one thing that's funny about us when it comes to business owners is because it's a bad habit. And because employ employees, we can do the same thing. We can take our bad habits, because remember, bad habits you're not responsible, responsible for. You can put them up, up underneath the couch and go to work and say, I feel good today. I have my nice suit on. You know, I'm feeling good. You got your hair cut. You know, you got your laptop. Everything's working. You're ready to go. You're down to business. So all of a sudden, we feel like our, our fleshly habits have gone somewhere. We left them at the door. No, no, no. They come with us. It's like a, that, that, that a suitcase that's there. But the thing about this particular suitcase is everybody feels it. Just because you don't know about it, people feel it. Remember, sheep101.info. Sheep, uh, the reason why I bring this up every now and then within these shows is because how does God refer to us? He recalls us sheep. Why does he call us sheep? Because we have some very sheepish behavior. As I always mention, those who want to call themselves wolves, please, that's not a good connotation in the Bible, is it? So think about it. We're all sheep. We got some interesting behavior. But this hard wiring is what I wanted to point out within sheepinfo.com. I'm sorry, sheep101.info. Because if you understand the characteristics of a sheep, you will understand the characteristics of this hard wiring. So let's go ahead and put this here. You have habits, whether they're in the spirit or the flesh, they're going to be consistent. The definition of a habit is a settled or regular tendency or practice, especially one that is hard to give up. 
Do you see what's going on here? There, there's a, there is a, a, a culmination of things that are coming into a kind of a collision course within. The thing is, it's hardwired into you as a, as a sheep. So place, your, place yourself as a sheep as God have, refers us into the Bible. If you got some hardwired stuff that's going on with you that's habitually hard to give up. But if it's hardwired, you're not going to give it up. You're in this weird place in life. So your habits start to create a definition of what people can expect from you. This is that, 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 that weird place in life that you actually create. You create the atmosphere that you didn't, want to, that you didn't any, even want to create. It's, it's so, it, it comes into this point where, let's talk about reputation. Your reputation has come based off of experiences that people have had with you, as you know. But whether you, you don't think about it in the moment, do you? A lot of people do and, you know, think about how they want to be presented. Some people will say, you know, I don't care what people, other people think about me. Okay, that is different. Because some of that stuff that you leave behind, even that attitude, means you're coming with a different a, a habit. You're going to infiltrate the room with something that nobody else really truly wants. But you're going to give it because you don't care what nobody else thinks. So you're actually the most dangerous person in the room right now. You're the most dangerous person to your own business right now. You're the most dangerous person to your, to your spouse right now. Because now you found solitude and not caring what other people think. Not caring what other people think is becomes a habit, right? It becomes settled. It becomes part of who you are. Caring too much as to what people, other people think to the point where you lose yourself is a habit. So you'll do some things. The, the, bear, the fruit that you start to bear is based off of that habit. Okay? So it's a definition. So that's how that reputation actually starts to get created. So when, let's say your name is, let's say we're talking about this person. His name is John. John goes out into, first time he comes into the office, let's say he's a new employee. John comes in the office. You know how it is. It's like the dating phase. The first three months, you're excited to have John there. He's the most amazing guy ever. I'm like, man, he's always on time, so on and so forth. Well, then John starts to slip off. And he, gets, he comes in late. Okay, that's not like John. He had a rough morning. I get it. So John continuously does that. Well, now something else is happening. So now he went from being on time all the time to now he's late every now and then. But now it's consistent. So now what people tend to do is start to take all the information that they started off with and start to backtrack and say, wow, I guess John did deceive me. Okay, that habit that you started created this place where people had expectations of you, but then all of a sudden, you start to dwindle down. But it started to create a reputation, so now anybody, anybody that says your name that has not met you, you have left an imprint on how people talk about you because of a habit that you started well, that, but you couldn't finish it. So now the conversation is, yeah, John, he's a... a, a, a uh, interesting guy. Yeah, let's just be nice. Let's be sweet. He's very interesting. I, I think you'll like him, but you know, you, you process yourself. Okay, guess what? You've already created a reputation. People have already started to define what they can expect from you, and they put, put a category on you. Not because that's what you wanted, but guess what? There was a habit that was created that had developed that for them. This is where people start to feel like they're misunderstood. So your guy, John, he's going to come in the office. I mean, don't you know how much I love being here? Don't you know what I sacrifice on the back? I mean, don't you really, truly understand? And people are like, you know what? 
okay, all right. But then guess what? You keep on doing some of the same weird stuff. Your same weird stuff keeps on coming into the office space and people are having a hard time understanding if I'm going to take your words or am I going to take the fruit? Okay? There's now you create conflict for people based on your habits, but you feel like you're misunderstood because guess what you did before you left the house? Oh, let me pick up this couch. Put that habit up underneath there so nobody knows about it. Guess what? That thing that, uh, up underneath the couch, you don't even know about it. You don't even know what you put up underneath there. You put your dirty clothes there, but you didn't, you didn't, pick up your, you didn't put your habits there because you're unaware of them. So now you're in the vortex, but again, because you're in the vortex, guess what you feel? You feel misunderstood. So now you feel like you against the world. Now you start getting defensive. Your habits create cracks in your foundation. Now, when I look at this, and when you get, if you get a closer look, there's a foot right there. This is how people start to tiptoe around you. Because this is how volatile your, your, your habits have become to people. The way that you do life becomes that volatile, and this is what people, how people start to experience you. You feel misunderstood, and people feel like I very much so understand that you're volatile. You have cracks in your foundation. You, you, I can't depend on you to be on time. That's where, guess what? Guess who's starting to win now? The enemy. Because he wants to create conflict. He wants chaos. But because you don't understand the cracks in your foundation, but other people do, now you got people doing this, coming at each other instead of working together. A house, divided, a house divided cannot stand, right? That's what the enemy is looking for, and that's what he's trying to create. And he creates it very well through you. That's how that works. It's not like the enemy has, the enemy needs permission in order to create discourse. He needs permission from us. So whatever you don't do during the spirit, you actually are giving the enemy permission to do for you. Because you're not going to not produce anything. The longer a person develops habits in the flesh, the more it weakens your character. Because what happens is you start to do infighting, not with just people, not with just your employees. You start to do infighting with yourself. You know what? Uh, you know, I, I, I can't stand this world. I, I'm out of it. I'm, I'm not going to do anything. I'll just leave it alone. It's better off without me. Guess what? You are speaking, you're speaking death into yourself now. Now, the more you start to do these bad habits, guess what? There's something that happens to you because things start to, things start to, to, to penetrate your own, yourself personally. People's perception of you starts to penetrate through you. It starts to weaken that character. R remember, you can have the presence of being effective, but at the same time be ineffective. But if you're not understanding your habits in the flesh and how they're creating your environment, it starts weakening your character because you start putting yourself in weird situations. Did you know that you're not built to be late? But if these habits are here, you start doing that, it starts to weaken your character. Because you start to apologize, and I start to do this, and it's nothing wrong with apologizing, I'm all for it. Do that. However, that's not where you're meant to be. You're supposed to be there. That's the difference. And so these fleshly habits develop uncertainty in your heart. You start to start questioning everything. That's how you know it's weakened your character is because now you start to question, you know how <laughs> you can start off on time all the time, but then get to the point where being late is okay with you? It starts to develop an uncertainty because you can't even depend on yourself to be on time because you lost a sense of course on what it means to actually get there.
and what it all about because that on being not being on time starts to surround life around you. There's something that's spiritually and emotionally happening to your physical when these habits, these fleshly habits are starting to enter into your environment. It's affecting the people outside and it's also affecting the people or actually you, yourself personally. You were not meant to have these fleshly habits, but it's hardwired, it's something that's settled, something that you're committed to do and it's hard to, to, to break from. Let's think about this. A weakened heart defiles, a weakened heart defiles your spirit. If, let's, let's, let's think about from the, the enemy's perspective real quick. Does the enemy want to enter into, enter into a room where the presence of God is? Remember, God defeated the enemy, right? Well, let's think about it. This is your temple. It's God's house. It's supposed to be at least. But the enemy's job, in order to remain and create residence in it, he has to defile it. He has to defile it. The weaker the heart is, the more defiled your spirit becomes. The more defiled your spirit becomes, the more committed to the enemy in trying to destroy you through defiling your spirit. That's where this toxicity starts to hit. It starts to hit. This toxicity has a way of having people take in what you're putting out and you taking in what you're putting out also. That's what the enemy's purpose is. It's not just for you. It's to replicate himself into everything else. This is a serious issue. When it comes to habits, it's a very serious issue. But people in, in, in life, because we were talking about in our last show, you look at your past relationships, you look at your current, and you're like, why are they always, you know, everybody's so weird. Well, is, are people weird around you because of some of the habits you leave behind? Are people weird around you because of what you may do to people based on these habits that you have and how you leave people feeling? Is that what's happening? Because if you haven't checked, checked, if you haven't checked everything, well, guess what? I guarantee your habits had something to do with why it was destroyed at one point. This is the pathway to growth um, with fleshly habits. Why is it a pathway? Now, it's a roller coaster. Roller coasters are fun if you need that thrill, right? Depending on what stage you are in life, whatever. The roller coasters aren't bad, right? But... A roller coaster is horrible when you're on it. The roller coaster is horrible when it looks like your, your, your household. The roller coaster is not that fun when that looks like your business model. The roller coaster is not fun when your employees have to ride a ride that they didn't sign up for. Your roller coaster is not fun when your employees need that security. How secure is your business? Go back to that show. When they need that security, when you yourself need security, Guess what? That roller coaster is not that fun. But the thing about fleshly habits, this is fun because it caters to the flesh. It actually starts to make sense. That's what, however, in your fleshly habits, you're actually okay with this business lifestyle. Did you know that? Did you know that you can get settled, as the definition said, into these habits? If chaos is okay, Guess what? Chaos is a good lifestyle for you. It makes sense to you. You can figure it out. The enemy's use of your fleshly habits. Because everything in the habit is a system. These are the two commitments that he's going to use. And you're going to make sure that you have a love for money. He's going to make sure John over there. And John, if you're watching, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about... Another John. <laughs> so John is over here. His heart and mind are on, on money. There's a commitment there. And if that cycle starts to happen to your life, then that is who you are. That becomes your habit. 
That becomes all you think about, all you do, and all you want. The enemy's job is to rewire how you think. And if he rewires how you think, then he's going to make sure that, again, your mind is stuck in the flesh. So that way, all you think about is this right here. Because how dare the enemy try to destroy us and send us back to God all in the same breath? That doesn't make sense. He's going to destroy you and keep on destroying you by recommitting your mind and how you think and what you allocate your heart to. So that way, that becomes your hard wiring. Because remember, regardless of who, whoever you're following, you're going to be hardwired to do something. This is the most dangerous part that we get catapulted into. Beware of false prophets. They come in sheep's clothing. But inwardly, okay, they are ravenous wolves. By their fruit, you will recognize them. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. What the Lord is talking about in the scripture is, you can't tell where the false prophets are. And we're talking about business owners. We're talking about um, employees. You can't tell. Because they're going to come in sheep's clothing. But inwardly, they're defiled. That's what he's talking about, but inwardly. But guess what? The, the Lord said, if anything, and this is, you can only tell by the fruit that they bear. Actually, even if you're not in the scriptures or not, you can actually tell, do they bear good fruit? Or a bad tree bears bad fruit. If something's going on with them inwardly, they're going to bear whatever is going on inwardly. So that's how you can tell, because sheep's clothing is going to come into place where it seems presentable to you. And these fleshly habits don't really affect you because you're not really paying attention to the right thing. But you can only tell by the fruit that they're bearing. So, we're going to come back to this scripture in here in Ephesians 4, 16. Losing a sense of shame, giving themselves over to sensuality from the practice of every kind of impurity with a craving for more. What does that mean in this habitual place? What does that mean to you? Follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on YouTube. This is why. This is why we need this conversation to continuously go because you see how deep this is. This is not small potatoes just talking about bad habits. But in the meantime, thank you guys for joining in. I actually have to get back to work. You guys have a wonderful day. See you later.